as families consider their options for the 2020-21 school year in the Ann Arbor Public Schools, we know the issues are different at elementary school than they are at middle or high school. This video will focus on A2 Student Link, A2 Classroom Connect, and A2 Virtual for elementary students, what the day in each program will look like, what the differences are between the programs, and what students might do best in each option. Joining me today are Superintendent Janice Swift, Assistant Superintendent Instruction and Support Services Don Linden, and Eber White Elementary Principal Bill Harris. Thanks for joining me, guys. Hello. Hello. <laughs> nice to be here. We'll start off. Can you give me an overview of the three options available to elementary school students? Well, Andrew, thank you so much for asking that question. Uh, we're looking at two programs that are quite similar and then a third program uh, that's distinct. So we'll talk about them that way. Both A2 Classroom Connect and A2 Student Link are, are elementary programs that offer our quality and our public school teachers and curricula in an elementary appropriate school day. They are both linked and connected right to the school that your child attends. The one distinction between these two selections is the parents thinking about your plan for the 2020-21 school year. We're really asking for that information so that we can better plan for a consistent uh, instruction, teaching and learning experience throughout the grade level, throughout the school year. So in A2 Student Link, uh, that group of parents uh, is at this time feeling and intending and planning to remain fully virtual for the full school year. So the child in that classroom will be a member of a virtual classroom, and those students in that classroom will create a classroom learning community that is fully virtual throughout the school year. Now in Classroom Connect, if that's your choice, uh, in that classroom, that group of students and their teacher are beginning the year virtually, and then at a time when it is determined to be safe and healthy to do so, that group of students will be transitioning into the local school classroom. Now, our third student option for elementary is called A2 Virtual, and that option is an independent student self-paced learning approach. We've heard from our parents in the community from some parents that they really liked the asynchronicity of last spring, that they, they would like to continue to learn in an independent self-paced uh, format. And that is what A2 Virtual offers. So I hope that's helpful, Andrew, just kind of a quick overview. And I think Ms. Linden and Mr. Harris will probably add to that if it's all right. Absolutely. Thank you, Dr. Swift. I think your description is spot on. I would add that A2 Student Link and A2 Classroom Connect programs have the same robust and rigorous full curriculum. So students will be engaging live throughout the day in a virtual online setting with their teachers, receiving quality instruction, uh, the same high quality curriculum, um, they will be prepared at the end of the year to move on to the next grade level or to graduate if they are high school students um, because that program is really intentionally designed to support a full course curriculum. But in addition, I think many families wonder about what the experience will be like in an online setting. And I'm just excited and thrilled to share that the pedagogy, the strategies that our teachers will be using to engage students in this online setting are spot on uh, research-based and fun. And just this past summer, we had the opportunity to engage in this way with our students and we had huge success. So over 5,000 uh, students participated in those 
And the feedback we received was that families were worried that it wouldn't be engaging, but when their students logged in, they saw how much fun they were having. They were talking about their learning at the end of the day um, and staying engaged. So I just want to reassure our families that our technique, in addition to our strong and robust curricula, is designed for an online setting to make sure our kids are connected and they remain engaged. So Bill, would you like to, to share any more? Yeah, I would just uh, echo what you said and, and also emphasize the part that both the A2 student link and the A2 classroom connect are both still connected to the school. We know how important of a value that is for our families and I would argue for our, our teaching and building staff as well that we stay connected as much as possible while in this distance learning uh, scenario and that both of those programs offer those connections to stay part of the, the school community, which we know is important to everybody. We're talking today about the learning program options for elementary school age students in the Ann Arbor Public Schools this year. Uh, obviously, one thing that a lot of parents are questioning is what the day is going to look like. Uh, obviously, for families that chose the A2 Virtual Academy, they'll be able to set their own day, their own schedule, since that program is, is self-paced. So that one is all set. What will the day look like for students who are in the A2 Classroom Connect or the A2 Student Link? Uh, any ideas on what that's going to look like? Yeah, that, that's a very fair question, Andrew. We're trying to take some of the things that worked last spring, such as starting the day with morning meetings and connecting with kids or the flexibility that was afforded for families, and at the same time, uh, work in what we've always been known for in terms of high academic standards and rigor. So after some um, feedback from the parent community over the last several weeks, what it looks like we're, we're landing with is the bulk and the core of our academic work is going to be done in the front portion of the day. Um, well, uh, of course, we still value the, the morning meeting and starting with that connection and meeting and checking in on social emotional needs of our children. And then we'll work into the academic portions. In the afternoons, there may be starting the afternoons with some of the academics, and then there's going to be some great uh, activities that will include specials activities, some small group learning activities, and so on. So we're going to have kind of that rigor and that full experience that Dr. Swift and Ms. Linden have talked about that'll uh, be throughout the day, but we think that we're, we're working it in such a way that a lot of those synchronous or live opportunities will be uh, front loaded um, academically into the, the front portion of the day, uh, allowing for some flexibility in the afternoon. And, and how long are we talking about will students be actually in front of the screens? Is it going to be you know, hours at a time or are they gonna be broken up a little bit more than that? Yeah, another great question. That's something that I know a lot of our parents have wondered. Uh, as we've been doing some planning and coordinating with, with teachers and curriculum coordinators, we fully understand that we've got to balance what's, what's appropriate again uh, for children in the developmental age and so on. So you're going to see some variability between, say, young fives classrooms and, and fifth graders, most definitely. But um, in general, there's going to be uh, uh, what we call our mini lessons that'll start at the beginning of a, a lesson and they'll be balanced with uh, many opportunities to do some asynchronous or independent uh, activities away from the computer, or if they're on com uh, the computer, again, it may be in a smaller group situation with, with a teacher or support staff or what have you. Again, a little different feel than that, than that whole class Zoom uh, feeling that I know um, worked for many of our students and families, but also raise some concern for, for other families. So trying to balance that out and, and certainly being mindful about what's healthy and safe for a student. And obviously the older a child uh, gets, then you can imagine some uh, more opportunities for them to have some live interactions with their peers and classmates and, and teachers as well. Uh, that balance between students being live and engaged with, with their peers and their teacher on screen, um, with some time to log off, do some independent work, take a break from that screen space, maybe go take a bike ride, come back, do, do a brain break or some physical activity, or to address some family needs during that time when they're logged off um, is important. So providing space throughout the day for those breaks to happen uh, is a part of our planning. 
and we'll share a sample schedule with families so they can get an idea of what that might look like. This elementary school day will feature the supports and the built-in provisions that we have right at school in our school day for our students who have special needs uh, in, in a documented in an individual education plan, for our students with 504s, for our students who might be accustomed to getting uh, English learner uh, second language services, for our students who have a variety of needs, those, uh, uh, those areas uh, will be attended to right in the school day. So our Schoology platform offers uh, the ability to move into a breakout room, uh, just like during the lesson cycle, a small group might get together in the classroom or move to a different room. The same kind of support structure will be in place in the virtual classroom. Ms. Linden, did you wanna add? I would love to. I, I am so thrilled to talk about these supports and supplemental services because these are a critical and important part of a student's school day. And there are spaces throughout the day where students will receive support from our service providers, our teacher consultants and resource room teachers, as well as speech pathologists and, and others. Um, both during core instruction as a support to engage and access the general education curriculum, but also in those small groups, as you mentioned, Dr. Swift. So those small group settings will occur um, both during the core academic block and in additional spaces in the afternoon. So we can make sure we're meeting all the needs of our students. Now, over the summer, we had some exciting programs with the summer learning programs. Um, and I've heard that it was a little bit more interactive, a little bit more enhanced, just overall a better experience for most people than what we had when we first went virtual in the spring. Ms. Linden, can you talk about, are we gonna continue that type of uh, programs? Is that what this, this fall is gonna look like? Thank you for this question, Mr. Cluley. Uh, I will tell you we've been working really hard since the closure in March to prepare for every possibility this fall. And some important work has taken place. Um, two or three major uh, components of our planning for fall have to do with our preparation to ensure that the experience this fall is robust, it is rigorous, it is engaging, and that students receive a full AAPS curricular experience. So they're well prepared for the next grade level challenge in their linear coursework. So throughout that preparation, a few important things have happened. Uh, we, as you know, have moved to one-to-one -to -one student devices so that each student in the Ann Arbor Public Schools will receive their own checked out device. More information will be shared about how to access those, but that is an important piece. Um, having a platform, a learning system where students can engage with all of their courses and teachers um, consistently is a really important piece. And this summer, we had the opportunity to engage in using that platform, Schoology, with all of our summer school groups. And uh, in addition to having those tools and that, that hardware sort of structure in place, um, we're just so excited about the strategies that I talked about just a little bit earlier that our teachers have been employing um, using really important engaging blended learning strategies and techniques to ensure that even though we're engaging in a virtual setting and we can't be together face to face, that that enriching personal connection and relationship piece of the learning process is intact. And so that has to do with lesson design, making sure that the lessons are designed from a perspective of being taught in a virtual setting. Um, and those, those student engagement pieces in a way where students can connect not only with the teacher, but with each other, because those social engagement opportunities are really important to us as well. So in summer, students were engaged in project-based learning. They were engaged in problem solving together, both large group and small group. Um, they received all sorts and manner of methodology for sharing their learning with the class and with their teacher, using polls, using different ways to demonstrate, using photographs, videos. Um, so as Mr. Harris has shared in the past, these are some of the silver linings to being in a virtual setting. 
all of those modalities that students can show their learning now have um, just vast potential and possibilities in this setting. So uh, we did get great feedback about the summer program. We're thrilled to be employing those pedagogy, those structures and strategies in our fall learning. And our commitment to this community is that each and every student in the Ann Arbor Public Schools will receive an exceptional educational experience, whether we are online or whether we are face-to-face. Now, I'm sure, uh, Principal Harris, you get this all the time, you know, as whenever our parents are asked to make a choice, they know that a principal is someone that knows their child, but yet also sort of knows the ins and out of the system. So as you're getting this question, what are you looking at in terms of giving advice for families for which of these three options is going to be the best for their child? Yeah, thank, thanks, Andrew. Well, I, I think I speak for principals and teachers across the district um, when I say, uh, perhaps selfishly speaking, that we would like all of our children to be in the A2 classroom connect. We think we're all longing for that day when our, our students and families are back on our campuses and we're back in a brick and mortar setting in an in-person uh, situation. We, obviously, we've talked a little bit about the, the importance of our, our sense of community and uh, when we can do that in an in-person venue, then, then we think that's, that's, that's back to the, the kinds of um, school experiences that we've come to know and love over our, our history. But um, that's not the, it's not as simple as that, obviously. And we know that families, individual families, have got a variety of needs and, and situations. And, and that's where I think... Um, families may find benefits to the A2 virtual situation if they've got really independent learners or, or they could see themselves almost providing almost a homeschooling experience and have the curriculum and some um, feedback provided for them on an occasional basis, I can see advantages for, the, for those families. Uh, likewise, for the A2 student link version, I can see advantages for the predictability or the consistency, knowing that a child's going to be virtual throughout the semester, if not the entire year, um, that allows family the flexibility to uh, travel or, or meet their work schedules or what have you that could be advantageous for uh, a family as well. So um, I think one of the benefits of what uh, Dr. Swift and the Ann Arbor team has, has done here is they've provided some opportunities that, um, as, as Ms. Linden said, can, can meet the students' up, uh, needs in any variety, but having these options really allows us to meet familial needs as well. I, I think I will add to what you have shared so eloquently and, and encourage our families to consider that Classroom Connect because of that rich relationship that our families have and our students have with our school teams. That's obviously uh, the closest to our traditional school setting. Uh, but those other two options that Mr. Harris talked about are important, as he shared, for, for meeting some family needs that may exist. And so let me just uh, share a little more about that A2 virtual option. Um, that curriculum is fully loaded and ready to go at the start of the year so that a student can work through that curriculum at his or her or their own pace. And it is not synchronous, meaning there's no live interaction during the day with a classroom teacher. There is a quality Ann Arbor public school teacher assigned to students and that teacher checks in, um, is a mentor through the online self-paced learning process and provides important feedback on the lessons and the assessments that students submit. But it is self-paced and independent. And so families who are considering that option need to consider whether their children are, are independent and able to self-manage to some degree, or as Mr. Harris mentioned, have enough uh, at-home adult support to be very hands-on for students who aren't able to self-manage. Um, so that's, I think, an important distinction for A2 virtual. On that Classroom Connect and Student Link difference, um, as Mr. Harris mentioned, Student Link, we're attempting to fulfill that selection uh, that families may make to provide a fully online community so that all the students participating in that program, while they are still connected with their neighborhood school, will all be in an online setting for the year, at least for the semester. So those are, as Mr. Harris mentioned and Dr. Swift mentions, families who don't intend to come back to the classroom setting 
um, at any point really through the year. They're going to stay in a virtual setting. So really um, what we're anticipating is many families choosing the Classroom Connect, um, intending to come back. Maybe they do so at their own pace. They come back when they feel safe to do so, um, when the school system allows it, of course, and the governor's plan allows it, but coming back at some point. And, and that, of course, is our goal. As everyone has shared here, we miss our students desperately. We want to see them. Um, we're aching for the day when that can happen. And in the meantime, we're putting in place every potential plan to make sure each and every student is supported and that our families receive the help and support they need. So I hope that's helpful. I just want to share that our desire, all of us in the Ann Arbor Public Schools, is to have our children back with us face to face at school in person. We have missed our children every day since March 16th, and we look to the day when we can have them back together with us. Uh, for now, we just want to uh, share how much we want to meet our children and families exactly where you are, where your needs are. And we understand uh, that we've got a lot of work to do. So day by day, week by week, we're all working together as an Ann Arbor Public Schools team and as an Ann Arbor community to work through this time of the COVID pandemic and to know that in serving our children together, so much has changed about our lives, and yet our focus on our children has not changed. That is our heartbeat. It is our shared understanding, our shared commitment, our shared promise is every child every day. So thank you. And we just appreciate the opportunity to be in touch. We'll continue to update day by day and week by week as we work through these challenging days, getting ready to see all of our children on Tuesday, September 8th for a virtual launch to the 2020 school year. Thank you. Well, thank you, Dr. Swift and Ms. Linden and Mr. Harris for helping to answer these questions about the options for families with students in elementary school. In other videos, we'll focus on middle school and high school age students, but we know that the challenges and the thoughts and concerns for elementary age students are really unique. And so we wanted to offer this video to help families that have elementary age students make their decisions for this coming school year.